The majestic bald eagle swims through the Salish Sea, hunting salmon and seals, using its keen eyesight to... Wait a second. That's not right. Okay, that's better. The majestic bald eagle soars over the Salish Sea, using its keen eyesight to search for prey. This is North America's only species of raptor from the genus Haliatus, the sea eagles. It's also our continent's greatest conservation success story, with populations in the lower 48 recovering from near extinction. There were less than 2,000 birds in the 1960s, and now there are more than 300,000. We recovered bald eagles by taking two major actions. We stopped putting millions of pounds of the insecticide DDT into the environment each year, which was causing bird eggs to thin and fail. The second action was more direct. We simply stopped shooting and poisoning them as a misguided government-supported predator control program. In Alaska alone, bounties were paid to hunters for killing more than 120,000 eagles. The bounty program ran until 1953, and bald eagles weren't given full protection until 1973, when they were one of the first animals listed under the newly approved Endangered Species Act. Bald eagles are opportunistic predators and scavengers with a wide-ranging menu. But when given a choice, they prefer fish. But they're not built to hunt for them by swimming. So what was the deal with that eagle in the water? We came across this bird calmly doing the butterfly in the chilly waters of British Columbia's Georgia Strait. While it's rare to witness, bald eagles do occasionally end up in the drink like this when they're hunting. Sometimes they swoop down to grab a fish or a bird that's too heavy to lift, though it's an urban myth that eagles can't let go once they grab onto something. Their talons are under full conscious control. Otherwise, it'd be awfully hard for them to take off from a tree branch. If they wind up swimming to shore with something heavy, it just means that whatever they caught is too tasty to let go of. Other times, the eagle hits the water while chasing prey, and its wings simply get too wet to take off again. Usually, this isn't a problem. The main risks are that the bird gets exhausted or hypothermic, and sometimes, sea lions. This gaggle of stellar and California sea lions were as curious as we were about the swimming eagle. There was a moment when it even appeared one of them might try to grab it. The eagle went on alert and faced down the lions. You want a piece of me? Huh? Bring it. After a half an hour, the eagle finally reached the shallows. Once enough water drained from her wings, she flew up to a perch to dry off, get warm, and maybe to ponder a new appreciation for the differences between sea eagles and sea birds. To get a look at more typical bald eagle behavior, we head east to the Fraser River Valley, where the Chehalis Flats fan out into the Harrison River. This is one of the Salish Sea's most important salmon spawning areas. We reached the Sandpiper Resort on the Harrison River right after a historic storm flooded much of southern British Columbia. On the riverbank, we wade through evidence of high water. More than 10 inches of rain fell in just two days, flooding homes, causing deadly mudslides, and stranding entire communities. Along with the terrible human cost, there's concern that the record deluge may have scoured away salmon nests or buried their eggs in suffocating silt. The Sandpiper offers a gazebo that's open to the public overlooking prime eagle watching territory. To get a look further upriver, the resort's GM, Ted Swain, picks us up in his jet boat. All five of our Pacific salmon species spawn in the Harrison and its tributaries. When the fish die after breeding in October through February, their carcasses provide a perfectly timed feast for bald eagles. In years with healthy salmon runs, thousands of eagles flock to this short stretch of river. The number of birds feeding here can be several times greater than the entire population that nests around the Salish Sea. That's because it includes a huge influx of bald eagles from Alaska and northern Canada that migrate south to spend the winter in our relative warmth, where unfrozen rivers provide access to salmon carcasses from these late season spawns. We're seeing eagles, but not in the numbers we'd hoped. To check on the salmon, we drop a remote camera near a likely nesting area. 
Salmon have amazing survival skills. These chum salmon made it upstream despite what meteorologists are calling a once in 500 years flood. The female maintains the strength to fight off challengers to the spot she's chosen to dig her red. And the male is still spunky enough to do his jiggy dance to entice her to lay eggs. After these salmon spawn, the nutrients they gathered in the sea will be cycled into the river's ecosystem by bald eagles and other scavengers. That is, unless their bodies are swept away by floodwaters, which is a concern not just this season, but going forward, since climate change is predicted to bring more winter rain to our region. And it would be bad news both for the large numbers of eagles that visit from the north and for the eagles that nest here in the Salish Sea. Bald eagles mate for life, and in late September, our local eagle pairs begin rebonding. They reinforce their connection during the fall and winter by embarking on a home renovation project, which as any couple can tell you, is a major stress test of your relationship. Eagles reuse the same nest for many years, weaving in new sticks every season until the structure grows as big as a hot tub and weighs tons. Both males and females fiercely defend the nest against any threats, especially other eagles. This usually involves a lot of high-pitched yelling at intruders. It's shocking to learn that such a large, powerful bird has a voice like Mickey Mouse on helium. But eagle confrontations can also turn violent when they go after each other using their talons as weapons. After about five weeks incubating, the eaglets hatch. Both parents gather food for the little fluff balls, which grow very fast. It's remarkable to see how gentle the adult birds are with the chicks. Their sharp talons and beaks are designed for ripping apart prey, but around the babies, they're used very carefully. Our local breeders don't have salmon runs occurring during the three months it takes for the eaglets to fledge. To feed their young, they depend on other prey like seabirds and on scavenging dead animals, including a lot of roadkill deer and rabbits. But it's salmon that gets them in shape to breed. For the snowbird bald eagles visiting from up north, it's salmon protein that powers their survival through the winter until they're ready to fly north to their nesting grounds. So, whether from acute flooding or just from continuing long-term declines in our salmon runs, it means increasing populations of local and migrating bald eagles are fighting over fewer and fewer fish. Since bald eagles are top predators, it also means changes to the food web below them. Each winter, as soon as the eagles can't find any more salmon carcasses, they turn to hunting for birds, such as seabirds, sea ducks, and waterfowl. Some species of those are experiencing their own population declines in the Salish Sea. There are many moving pieces to a complex ecosystem. To figure it all out and to help at-risk wildlife, we need to track those pieces. In order to investigate the eagle part of the equation, we join David Hancock and his team from the Hancock Wildlife Foundation. David is a Canadian biologist who's been studying raptors since the 1950s. He's watched the bald eagle recovery unfold right before his eyes. When he first began counting nests in southern British Columbia, he found only three. Today, it's a much different story. We now have about, I have just over 600 nesting pairs in the Fraser Valley, where our estimate is there's 35 to 50,000 northern birds moving in each late fall through the winter. David is under permit to put trackers on eagles as part of a long-term research project that will allow us to precisely understand their movements and habitat usage. Data that we can overlay with information gathered on salmon, seabirds, herring, and other links in the chain. How are you? The best place he's found to recruit bald eagles for this study is one of the most unnatural Hello. settings you can imagine. This is the Vancouver landfill in Delta, BC. And it's been a popular raptor rendezvous since it opened in 1966. We've long thought that landfills acted as big, unintentional bird feeders. But Vancouver stopped putting food scraps in this landfill in 2015 and yet, the eagles keep coming. 
One research paper theorizes that the birds may be attracted here because the buried waste generates heat and the man-made mountains block the wind. During the wintertime, eagles, like all wildlife, need to be particularly careful with their energy budgets. A roosting spot that helps them retain body heat can be very advantageous. There may also be some social benefits. It may not seem like a romantic location to us, but to eagles approaching adulthood, this may serve as a singles bar. When they're not nesting, bald eagles generally tolerate each other as long as there's plenty of food around or there's some other reason not to waste energy fighting. That doesn't mean they drop their competitive spirit. After David sets out snares, we stand back and watch the eagles reinforce their pecking order by playing musical chairs on fence posts. There's a good mix of eagles here. Both males and females carry the same plumage, but it's easy to tell which birds are juveniles because they don't grow the distinctive white head and tail feathers until they mature at around five years old. It's the darker subadults we're after for this study because we don't want to take the chance of bothering any birds that might be breeding. After several hours of waiting, we're able to capture three juveniles of various ages. Hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes. To keep the eagles safe, they get hoods which immediately calm Hello. them. Then, they're oh. snuggled into a wrap, like an eagle burrito, to make sure they don't injure their wings. Once the birds are secure, biologist Miles Lamont begins the examination. Along with taking part in the tracking study, these eagles will give us information about the health of their population via detailed measurements, parasite checks, and blood and DNA samples. Labs will be looking for evidence of persistent pollutants like lead, which is a chronic health problem for raptors. Game animals shot by hunters using lead ammunition may later be scavenged by eagles. While the eagles are in hand, we get a great opportunity to really study this wonderfully evolved bird of prey. An eagle's scaly foot displays its reptilian lineage. These could be the toes of a baby velociraptor. So this is the talon that helps the eagle grab and catch Prey. You can feel right here the texture, it's very rough, helps it hold on. There are tendons that actually help keep that claw closed once it grabs. An adaptation to help fledgling birds learn to fly is that their first flight feathers are longer than adults. The result is more surface area on the wings, which increases lift and makes long flights easier. It also makes young birds just leaving the nest look bigger than their parents. So this hatchier bird has a wingspan greater than I do, over six feet wide. The eagle's sharp hooked beak is one of the world's most powerful. It's designed to pierce and tear flesh. Inside, the tongue sports rear-facing barbs that help grab and pull prey into the throat. <laughs> Eagles not only develop those white feathers as they mature, their beaks and go. eyes turn from these darker shades to bright yellow. <laughs> Eagles don't sweat. They regulate their body temperature through their featherless feet and by panting like a dog. <laughs> these annoyed clucks are bald eagle speak. She's saying, you better set me free ASAP or I'm gonna bite your face like it was a flounder. Raptor's superpower is their sight. There's a reason we use the phrase eagle-eyed. These large eyes can see four or five times better than us humans and can also distinguish a wider spectrum of light all the way to ultraviolet. Scientists estimate that a bald eagle can focus in on a struggling fish or a paddling seabird from miles away. After the examination, each bird gets ID bands on their legs and two of them are fitted with backpack cellular transmitters. These lightweight trackers are custom made for our weather with three solar panels so they can recharge even on cloudy days. What Miles is putting on now is called a backpack harness. It's a tag that will allow them to track this bird for up to five years, just like your cell phone tracks where you go. 
Miles adjusts the trackers, like a tailor making a custom suit, to ensure they don't cramp the eagle's style. This entire project depends on the birds behaving normally and staying healthy, so they can show us where they go for years to come. Once Miles is satisfied with the positioning, the birds are ready for release. This gorgeous eagle is a female. They grow about 25% larger than males and rule the roost in bald eagle society. As soon as the eagles fly off, the trackers begin pinging nearby cell towers. And as we watch them over the next two months, we receive some very interesting data. The bird designated Turf 21 spent the first few weeks using the Vancouver landfill as a base, but ventured out into natural areas like Boundary Bay, where it's likely she was preying on seabirds. On April 17th, she began island hopping her way north through the top of the Salish Sea and up the inside passage to Alaska, keeping to natural habitats where she'd be hunting prey like herring and more seabirds. Okay, ready? Turf 19's tracker tells a different story. As soon as we released him, this bird headed south of the border, flying to Point Roberts and then over to Bellingham, Washington. He then started north and flew to just below the Alaskan border south of Ketchikan. He roosted in some natural spots on the islands, but then we noticed a large amount of data points coming from one small area. When we zoom in, we find that the bird has been hanging around the Prince Rupert landfill for more than a week. Up here, the residents still dump food scraps at the landfill. So this eagle could be up there feeding instead of just enjoying the warmth. This brings up a question we hope the tracking study can help answer. If bald eagles are finding a lot of food at landfills, is that increasing their population beyond the natural carrying capacity, considering the current state of our salmon runs? If so, one likely effect is that bald eagles are putting more top-down pressure on seabirds. In this region, so many conservation issues come back to the health of our salmon. We're able to do the easy fixes like no longer shooting eagles, but we'll never bring the ecosystem close to natural balance unless we also do the hard things like recovering salmon. Back in southern BC, we wanted to release the last bird in a more natural area. So we drove the short distance to Boundary Bay. So we're gonna release this one-year-old bald eagle. He's got bands on him and we're gonna see how he does. Befitting a wild animal that's a symbol of freedom, strength, and fierce determination, this eagle did not appreciate being captured and held. Once the hood came off and the bird got its bearings, it decided that if it had to get banded, that I should also go home with a souvenir. Okay. What does it feel like to get bit by a bald eagle? It hurts, but I don't blame the eagle at all. A little nip from this amazing bird is a small price to pay for the privilege of seeing such a magnificent species. This is our national symbol and a sacred totem of tribal culture. And it's come back from the brink. It's an honor to help with research that ensures that bald <laughs> eagles will thrive for generations to come. I'm running towards the atmosphere. I'm running towards you. I'm running towards the atmosphere. Will I see you here? To follow the tagged eagles, go to HancockWildlife.org and click on Live Eagle Tracking Summary.